your host, Wayne Noon, Greg Marble, Uncle Saxon, and Pete Peters. Welcome to Rat Salary Review. Today we are here with Urban Breed. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hey, what's Hello? up, Urban? I did pronounce oh. your name correctly, right? I believe so. All right. I mean, you. it all depends on where you're from. If you're in Germany, you, you will just say Breedy, because that's what they call me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Those crazy Germans, right? Well, they, they seem to like, you know, calling everybody names all the time. <laughs> Everybody gets a nickname. I've never had a nickname in my life until I got to play with the Germans. That's oh, yeah? wow. seven. You had nicknames. <laughs> so. Actually, yeah, I think you're, yeah, you're right because uh, one of the other guys on our show, um, Troy, he's he plays in a band, and and most of his band is uh, German guys, and I think they all have nicknames for each other. Yeah, yeah. I think I don't know, I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but yeah, I remember him saying something about that. Yeah. So, how's it going? Oh, Wayne, I call oh, you well. Pookie. What what what'd you say? I call you, I call you Pookie, and Pookie. we're not German. Well, that's that's Pookie. another show. <laughs> another oh, show was... for another time. <laughs> yeah, well, how, how how are things going? They're going pretty good, I think. You know, uh, I got up at five this morning because I had this idea because I've been working on a demo the night before mm-hmm. and uh, couldn't quite get it to jail. I mean, it was pretty good, but I wasn't mm-hmm. quite happy. At five, I wake up going like. Ah, I got it. So I got up and uh, tracked the guitars that I had in mind in my underwear. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you, the guitar was cold. <laughs> <laughs> so you play guitar too, huh? I'm not a good guitar player, no, but I can demo stuff. But enough to, to know what you want, kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. I didn't know that. For those things I don't know how to play, I mean, then, then I just tell someone, this is what I want, where I'll right. play it on the key. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That'll oh, work. That's cool. <laughs> that's At least you cool. know something. Not just a vocalist guy, you know. Uh, <laughs> I really I wanted to be the bass player to begin with, so that's oh, really? where it started. And yeah, oh. and, and you know, like pretty much any musician, I, I bet you know you, you'll find that there's a, an instrument in the room. It doesn't matter if I know how to play it or not. I'm gonna pick it up and make some noise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't you can't just leave it sitting there. No. All right. All right. So. Um... Wow, you've been you've been singing for a long time. The first time I've actually seen you. Actually, you know what? We've been uh, longtime friends. I don't think you remember, but uh, long, very long time ago. You probably can't see this, but there's me and you. There's me. Oh. I was very skinny, <laughs> and there's you. Hey, we met at, uh, we met at where, the, where was that taken? At the BB King's Club in um, oh. in Manhattan. So yeah. then that must have been when we were opening up for Ed Guy. Then I guess. Yes. Yep. That's why I was yeah. wearing an Ed Guy T-shirt. Yeah. Makes Wasn't sense. Right. Makes sense. It's just to make sure that you would remember why you were there, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a cool show, and that was the first. I didn't even know you guys were on the bill when that show was um, going on. And then when I saw you guys come on, I'm like, oh my god, that's pretty cool. Because, um, like I was saying on the previous show, uh, I found out about uh, Tad Morose. Um, a friend of mine gave me like a mixtape or whatever, and had that song uh, "Life in a Lonely Grave" on it. Ah, and I was instantly that's hooked. The Last track, though, on the album, wasn't it? Um, I, off the top of my head, don't know. I don't think so. I think it was like somewhere in the middle, maybe towards the end. Huh. I thought it was the last, but maybe not. I, I don't know. always remember. So <laughs> I'm sure It's been a while, so I'm sure you yeah. wouldn't remember. But uh, yeah, I heard that, and I heard your vocals, and I'm like, oh my god, this, this guy's really great, you know? So of oh, course, I, then you. I had to... Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to go back and listen to all the other stuff, and you know, all the other albums you were in, so... Yeah. I was a big uh, Tad Morose fan. Yep. That is cool. Yeah. So and how was still, it? Uh, they're still going today. So that's Yeah, cool. they are. I'm still listening to them. I got all their stuff, except for the new album. Yeah. I haven't gotten that one yet. But uh, no. so what do you think yeah. about them? What do you think about them now? Well, um, they are doing exactly what I thought they would be doing without me. Yeah. So that basically means it's a little darker. I, right. I do like I do like a catchy chorus, and Krista and I, we would always have a little bit like that. We're pulling in different directions. I wanted to, let's do a little pop here, this chorus, and it sticks in people's heads. And people are like, no, I want it darker. <laughs> so, yeah. so so, this is exactly where I thought they would be going, almost exactly. I mean, it's not like I can predict the future and see, like, this is the, the songs they're going to write, because, you know, then I could write the songs for them. All but right. no, I, I figured this would be the direction they'd take. It took yeah. them a while, but now they're rolling, and they're all cool people, you know, so. Yes. Yeah. Right. So what made you um, leave the band? 
Well, like I said, we've been butting heads all the time, mm. Christian and I, about what to do, you know, musically and uh, and otherwise. So really, ultimately, it came down to the fact that I did not think that the songs were good enough that we had for the follow-up to Movies of Envy. And mm. he went ahead and booked the studio because we talked about it, right? And mm. I said, you know, come on, let's, let's roll back. Let's, <laughs> let's uh, take a vote. And we took a vote and uh, it came down in my favor. And I came back a week later and uh, there'd been lobbying going on and... The studio was booked, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, like, I, I, "I'm not good with this." So I stepped out. That was really it, you know. Yeah, because yeah, so. they went on a really long hiatus. I think they almost yeah, yeah. pretty much ended the band, basically. Well, I know the guys, so the fact yeah. that they're inactive for ten years—that's you know—that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I see all their posts, and yeah, they're yeah. pretty funny. They would still have shown up at rehearsal, you know, in rehearsal rooms and stuff like that, and just met up and kept plugging away, but just not being very public about it. So right. that's really how it went down. Yeah. Who's moving their microphone? Is that you, Pete? That is I. Last oh. week, you were tapping your fingers on a table. Now this week, you're going to play with the microphone. You got to do something to get noticed, right? <laughs> you hear the... I hope that's with your hand, actually. <laughs> with my foot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. You always got to be a clown. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you ask anything, Pete? Yeah. The, um, so Urban, of course, was always a fan, you know, since Tad Morose. Um, but I want to ask you, man, you mentioned tracking in, in the room you're in. Um, I always love asking these kinds of questions. What do you use to track with? Um, what kind of software do you use? Anything that you favor particularly? Well, you know, if we go back to the Tad Morose days, then I use Cubase. Uh, I've moved moved away from that since because I was a little annoyed with how slow they were at reacting to, you know, fixing a bug. So I started using Reaper. And I will say the transition period was oh. like two months where I would almost throw a, <laughs> the computer away because it was so frustrating because everything was backwards. That's mm -hmm. Reaper. Now, now, I think, now I think it's the other way around if, you know, because the guys in Germany, they work on they work in Cubase and I hate it. Uh, this is so convoluted to get to one to do one thing. I have to do three things, and, and it's all backwards. If I'm gonna select something, no, wait, this is the other way around. And that, but you know, I moved to Re I'm still using Reaper, so I, I love it. So. Interesting, yeah, Reapers. Uh, yeah, we yeah. actually we actually use Reaper too. So yeah, no, I think it's absolutely fantastic. So and a lot of a lot of people are are moving over to Reaper as well, I believe. Well, th there are multiple reasons too, you know, because mm -hmm. the, the fair pricing policy, I think that's fantastic. Oh, if you make yeah. a certain amount of money, it's cheap. If you make more, it's still cheap, but, you know, it makes sense. It's a more reasonable price. And on top of that, there is no copyright, you know, coding in, in there. It's all just efficiency. It's all going, mm -hmm. going straight into music production. That's all you're doing. There's no extra stuff. So, of course, the software is going to work better. Mm -hmm. It's actually only dealing with what it needs to be dealing with at the moment. So, mm -hmm. Right, right. Right. Yeah, because we we ran into some issues, right? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, but for the. But you know, if you if if you report a bug within Reaper, it'll get fixed within the week. Yeah. And typically yeah. a day afterwards, but you know, within the week. Whereas, that community you know, is insane. When I, when I decided to quit that stuff, it took them half a year, and this could be a major bug. Like you moved a note in in the MIDI editor, and it's like crashed. <laughs> you move a note wow. to the media editor, that's pretty basic. You should be able to do that. It took them six months to fix. Oh, and wow. Like, yeah, <laughs> <forget it. laughs> that's they crazy, might have gotten man. better. That was, you know, that was a big, big shift, too, I think, uh, within their community. Where I think they had a big software overall and probably made some mistakes somewhere. In there. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, they're Whatever. constantly constantly updating that thing. Well, what's funny is every time you turn your system on, there's an update for it. <laughs> so it's constantly oh, yeah, being yeah. improved. <laughs> yeah. But, Not but necessarily yeah. big stuff all the time, and it's you know doesn't necessarily impact you or me, but uh, someone will benefit from it anyway. So yeah, right. exactly. Uh, Uncle Saxon, anything? Hey, that's me. Uh, first, I want to see if we can truly be friends before I start asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> moto rules. What? See that? What's that mean? Got my moto hockey uh, hat on. Oh, what is that? <laughs> I don't know either. Swedish hockey team. <laughs> ah, hang on here. It's been a while since I've lived in Sweden, and I haven't really been following hockey. But <laughs> well, they've yeah. been around since uh, 1921, yeah. so. Yeah. 1921? I thought you'd dig that. Damn, you're old. 
Okay. You know, yeah. the, the, the uh, how come you got that hat? <laughs> he he has everything in his house. If you just think about it, he's probably pulled up. You'll, you'll oh, he's got everything. So so if I say Brinas, you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, that's a lady's uh, lady parts, right? <laughs> no, no, it's it's a it's another hockey team from Sweden. They were closer to where I used to live, so. I don't even know about Moto, to be honest. I traded this okay. for a Rogers, uh, Rock Cruise yeah. shirt. So. If that had actually said Moto, <laughs> I would have known what you were talking about. But MH meant nothing to me at the moment. <laughs> you know, I like, said Moto. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. I, got but I was just reading what it said on the hat. I wasn't listening to you, man. It's, no, it's all right. always takes press. <laughs> I see something beat, and that's what I'm going by, you know? <laughs> the printed word is stronger. <laughs> so, from what I can tell... You haven't really released anything in a couple of years. What? Um, well, uh, actually, we haven't really. That was 2017, I think. That that's was not that long. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not that long, but it's too long. You know, we, we someone decided that, you know, people were complaining that we were churning out albums. And someone said that, yeah, let's give it a break just to, you know, show people that we can do it. And, <laughs> and I'm actually getting annoyed now because we would have had another album out and had stuff going. And the. Uh, on the other hand, it's been fun to be at home. So. You're talking about this album right here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Magic. That's the one. Got the box yeah. set. So, yeah. so, so we did that album and, uh, you know, we've done one album a year for a while. And that's actually a cycle I like a lot because, you know, you're, you're busy enough. You never stop and you just keep, keep things rolling. And uh, since, since, you know, I'm not the only ones writing songs, you know, an album a year is perfectly fine. I guess if you're just, you know, one or two guys writing songs, then maybe it's tougher. Not yeah. so much. You have a whole team, you know. All right. All right. Computer maze. Uh, yeah. <laughs> actually, Lance King lives right down the right down the road from me. Cool. In Minneapolis, so he's uh he's been in the scene around here since the '80s, and pretty much everybody knows him. But that's neither here nor there. My question is, uh, it doesn't look like you played on any of the albums. Did you just replace uh, Barlow? For the live stuff or uh the, the plan was that i would join the band and we would you know do an album and get rolling with everything but uh it, as soon as that stuff happened uh, michael got sick so mm -hmm. and and that's like he was the engine like in the band so we tried to keep it rolling but it just fell apart right. you know you, you take the administrator out of it all you know he was the originator he was the he was the founding member of the band, and uh, then he couldn't do it because uh, he just burnt out, and uh, it was really serious. So he had to stop. His doctor told him, "You can't do this anymore. Just take a break, stay at home." And so that's what he did. And we tried keeping it rolling, but uh, you know, you take the engine out of the, the motor, you know, out of the car, and then all of a sudden you stop. So mm -hmm. eventually, the guys got it rolling anyway, but that was without me then because I was busy doing other stuff. But interestingly enough, you bring this up, and uh, I just talked to Michael yesterday because uh, uh, the song that I woke up at five in the morning and had to go retract some guitars for, I sent the demo to him for you know constructive criticism. So he got back to me, and uh, he had a few ideas, and I didn't have a solution for it. So I went to bed, and I got up at five in the morning because, bam, the idea came in. <laughs> so <laughs> that works. Yeah, it, it does sometimes. <laughs> um, I've been uh, honestly, I'm. I'll be honest. I'm kind of ignorant to uh, your style of music. Um, I've always heard your name. Everybody's always raged about your vocals, but uh, yeah, they're whatever, all wrong. They're all wrong. There's just so much music. <laughs> um, but I, I did have, YouTube. Yeah, I YouTube the hell out of you for the last week, and yeah. I found uh, Nosferatu to be the coolest thing that. I heard you sing. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> it's it's not my favorite thing. I would say, you know, objectively, I say that yeah, they did squeeze a good performance out of me. <laughs> so they did that, yeah. But so you, uh, did, you didn't like being in, in uh, doing that or what? I know. Because you the, you were on the. It's the fact that, you know you know I've been around for a while, so to me it just felt derivative. Yeah. It's like. They, they, they saw this song, I want to write a song like this, and then I'm going to write a song like this. And uh, this song is good by this band. Let's write a song like that. And I didn't like that too much. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it, it's fine if it happens by accident, because that happens all the time. You know, you right, just right. write something. Oh, this sounds a bit like this. But when you have the plan, I'm going to write the song like this. Then, I, then I'm not so thrilled anymore. It, yeah. it feels like you know you're you're working at the factory all of a sudden. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. So, well, but yeah. Like I, I'm so, on the to, to, in, to all the so. people out there that love that album, it's still a good album. It's just you know, <laughs> yeah, different ways of looking at things. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, like I said, I'm on the outside looking in, and these two mega power metal fans over here, I haven't agreed with yeah. them at all on anything. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't surprise me that uh, you had a little self-criticism to that uh, that album. <laughs> all right, last question. Think, um, uh, yeah, they're good. They're, they're good songs on there, too, so, you know, that's... Uh, I, I like it. It's metal, man. Um, yeah. What's the funniest thing you've ever seen on the road? How about that? Uh, the what? The silliest? Yeah, the silliest. The craziest. <laughs> I don't know. What have I seen? I That's... It's a difficult question, man. I, mean, either, so. I don't normally go around thinking about what goes on on the road. And, and also, half the time, I'm asleep. <laughs> that's, really, <laughs> that's really what happens. Uh, I miss a lot of stuff simply because, uh, yeah, i got to make sure that I'm in good shape for the show so I'm, i can't be out partying and I'm, unfortunately i do like staying up late so what happens is you know i'm the last one no not the last one i'm pretty I'm pretty late going to bed though but then i'll be sleep, still asleep so by the time i wake up the bus is already parked and the catering is up and running so i just get up and have breakfast at three in the afternoon so i miss a lot of the stuff well, and probably uh, how you kept your easy. voice so so good all these years you know uh, it's not always good because, like I said, you know, I don't necessarily go to bed in time. And sometimes you can't sleep till three in the afternoon. <laughs> but, yeah, it helps, definitely. Um, you had you know, a hell of an output from what I can tell. And, uh, yeah, more power to you. I was going yeah, to say, though, that one of the, the, the more fun things that happened uh, on a tour was when we were out there. And Ricalzi was with us on the tour. And I do play a lot of disc golf since I've moved to the U.S., which is interesting because disc golf is also pretty popular in Sweden. So, but I never did, did play it there. So I brought a couple of discs with me, and you know, just in case. And in Germany, though, there aren't any disc golf courses. It's not really there's like one or two. And so I just, you know, grab anyone a couple of discs and go hit up a park. And I got Rick to come out with me, and that was interesting. He hadn't really played it before, but he was good. He's a natural. He he got the gist of it, and we, yeah, we we saw some crazy shots and uh, almost took out a statue at some point. <laughs> <laughs> what weight do you use? What weight? Well, I'm around 173 grams. All right. Is that a big one? I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. But uh, uh, I just like them heavier, and unfortunately, okay. I shouldn't really use that. Uh, I should really run, you know, weights around 160, 165, 163, something like that. But for some reason, I picked up most of my discs, and they're 173 grams. So. But the one I get the most distance out of is a little bit lighter because my yeah, arm is big. So, yeah. Well, rock and roll. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, silly <laughs> stuff. <laughs> the guy's got to protect his voice. What, you think he's got time for all that stuff? There's time, um, there's, there's time for stuff. That. No, no. You just you, you perform and you go right to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my life. <laughs> So uh, talking about uh, Bloodbound, and you know, yeah. um, you you were in the band for the first album, and then you left, I think, for the second one, right? Um, yeah. I mean, to begin with, the first album, like I said, they got a good performance out of me, and this is exactly what it was. Uh, I I was, you know, I was an employee, yeah. and uh, and then they decided they couldn't afford it, so they stopped paying me, and so I stopped wow. playing. So. I never really quit, you know. I mean, yeah. they didn't fire me for the first one, and I didn't quit. It's basically you, they, you don't pay me, I don't work. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, so makes that sense. Was, that was the situation. And, you know, they might have thought it was unfair because, you know, I wasn't cheap. Right. Um, and, you know, a little bit of hard feelings around there just because of that. Because in a way, you know, they, they needed someone to do, you know, they needed a front man. You know, got to have right. singer. And so they yeah. had to stop doing stuff when I stopped singing. But at the same time, the deal was a deal, and uh, yeah, so that 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 was that was the thing. And then for the second album, they brought in Michael Borman, and uh, I remember saying at the time, "Hmm, like he's gonna have time to tour with them." So I said, "Yeah, 
give it a month. Someone's going to call me and ask me <laughs> if I can do these shows. And uh, that's what happened. Eventually, they gave me a call because they had a few shows booked and uh, they had no, no one to sing. So the old deal was back on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we did that. And at the end of it, they, they said, hey, Urban, we really can't afford it. And I said, yeah, no. And uh, they said, so would you consider being a full member instead? And, and I said, sure, I'll do it on one condition. I write the lyrics, and I'm in full control of the vocal melodies. Yeah. And uh, Thomas said, sure, okay. And this is exactly what happens, because uh, before this, the, the guy in charge of writing vocal melodies and the, the lyrics, that was Frederick Berg. So Frederick and Thomas, they're basically the, the core of Bloodbound. Mm -hmm. So he, I basically made him uh, useless, he, and he felt useless, wow, and this okay. is why they... This is why they fired me after Tabula Rasa, because he wanted something to do again. Right, and, okay. Uh, and you can tell what happened. He went right back to doing what he normally does. So there's a big difference in, you know, the, the style is different because of that. It's also different because Thomas had the idea he wanted to be a little heavier for Tabula Rasa. So we got that and also my, my vocals and my melodies and my lyrics. And then you change that out and you you go back to Bloodbound doing Bloodbound. Yeah. I didn't really... I didn't really um... <laughs> care for them like because i when you left ted morose i was like missing hearing your voice and then i heard that album come out the nosferatu album and it wasn't too much i wasn't into it too much uh, it's but a little the, different style, you know, it is a little different but little um, actually from listening to it like a couple of days ago um just to remind myself what it sounded like i actually liked it a little bit more hearing it now than i did back then well it's the, the old case of i want this yeah but i'm being served this yeah. so even if if what you're being served right now is good, is not what you wanted. Exactly. You wanted hot wings. You got a decent pizza. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hot wings would have been better. And yeah. another day, it's the the other way around. Yeah, exactly. What are you gonna say, Pete? No, I was gonna say it's, I I like. He was gonna say of, pizza. I want uh, pizza. <laughs> everybody wants pizza. I mean, we're from. I'll take we're, pizza and the wings. Yeah. We're, we're from <laughs> New mind. York. We're from New York, so you don't get nothing but pizza uh, here. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, I like, I like all those albums. I like Bloodbound. I, I like the Tabula Rasa. Actually, admittingly, uh, with Tabula Rasa, it was funny because when I heard it, I really liked it. I didn't know it was you singing, <laughs> and I said, and I and, and I'm I'm embarrassed by that actually. I was like, damn, I like this song's be. good, man. This, yeah, and uh, that was a funny story with that. And then I realized, like, shit, that's a, that's Urban. What the hell's going on? What the, how did I not even freaking hit? But uh, yeah, man, no, it, it's I like all those albums, man. You, you do a great job. Any anything you sing on sounds good, you know. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you don't have to beat yourself up too much because I have done this. You know, I think I've been kind of consistent about this to gradually shift my style from album to album yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what what I, the way I sang on the the previous album is it's not gonna be what I sound like on the next one because right. I'm always trying yeah. what didn't I do oh I didn't do this yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna try that yeah. and then that's more. I think uh, maybe the most consistent bit about it might have been between uh, Undead and Matters of the Dark but mm -hmm. there was a change a shift all the way through you know Tabula Rasa was a different one Nosferatu had a different little bit and uh, also, within uh, Serious Black here, with the last three, we've had a different style. But it's, it's right. just a gradual shift, you know. It's, it's not yeah. like I'm going very bluesy all of a sudden. <laughs> it's just but but that's it's... great. But that's great because if that little gradual shift has a big impact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. And, you know, some people don't want it and other people do like it. You know, some people just resist change. So they want right. the same album served up three times in a row. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can't stand that. Uh, actually, yeah. I wanted to ask you too. How, uh, were you doing any other band or anything before Tad Morose? Because I'm looking up, you know, other things that you've done. Mm -hmm. I, I've, there's nothing, nothing before Tad Morose. Nothing that we, you know, that was actually distributed anywhere. So, right. so how did they? Uh, obviously, like anyone else, I played in a, a bunch of bands before. You know, did other how, stuff, but not really anything of any significance. No, right. and, so and in fact, you? yeah, well. Uh, the thing is, it's a little funny, but I'm going to say that the, the fact that uh, Anders gave me a call, that was the bass player of Tad Morose at the time, he gave me a call, and uh, I hadn't sung for two years. I just said I was going to quit. Mm. So, and uh, they, Christian actually had left for Memento Mori with Mike Weed, and uh, 
because he had produced an album and you know Mike Weed liked what he heard, so he took him with him. So they they needed a singer, and Anders remembered, oh, well, why, why don't we check with Urban? Because uh, before Anders played with Tad Moroz, uh, there was a, a guy called Rossi. He mm-hmm. played with them, and he quit. No, actually, he was fired. <laughs> he was fired, <laughs> and Anders got the job. And uh, Anders was basically just, they took him out of uh, the band I was in at the time. We were a progressive rock piece. So mm-hmm. they, they asked Anders if he joined, so we were without a bass player. And a month later, they needed a drummer. They took our drummer. And so basically, it was just me and one guitar player left. And uh, when Anders gave me a call, you know, I hadn't been singing for two years. And they, at that point, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So send me some demos. And they were a local band to me because, you know, they, they only lived like 20 kilometers away. Right. And so I'm like, well, I should have known, you know, what they sounded like, but I didn't. <laughs> and I really should have known what they sounded like because they were poaching our members. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I didn't at the time. So they sent me a few demos and I was like, yeah, I could probably do this. And so I went in for an audition and it... Uh, yeah, and they asked me if I can come back, come back for another one, and they did that for two months. And after that time, Chris just said, "You know, you do understand that you remember, right?" And I said, "Like nobody said anything. <laughs> I just thought you were super, super extensive with this auditioning part. So yeah. that was that was interesting. So that's how we got rolling on that. But uh, a little bit later, we played a festival, and uh, the one guy that was still, you know, the only guy that didn't get picked up from the, the pro- progressive rock band. He played in a different band at the time, and he met us, and he said, oh, I see now. I was fired, wasn't I? <laughs> 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 he had the whole band except for him. In, in yeah, yeah. Rose. <laughs> wow. That, was that sucks to be him. What's he doing yeah. now, anything? Um, I think he's, he's, he still plays in a band or two. He's a good, good musician. He's also a, a good electrician, so he does stuff like that. I think he actually builds amplifiers, too, oh, know, custom yeah. Cool. He does a lot of that. It's been a while since I met him, but he's a cool, no. cool dude. Oh, cool. Um, so where was I going anyway? So that was before Tad Burrows, That was that was really just it. That was the, the funny story about that. We just poached members out of that band, and suddenly we were we were right. Tad Burrows. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that was a, yeah, a strange situation to be in. Yeah. But the fu- the funny bit is that I hadn't been singing for two years, and that's when they gave me a call. So. Yeah, that, well, that's good they remembered you then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good well, you know, th- there's always a shortage of, of good singers, I think. So if you yeah. if you have doing a good job at some point, someone is going to give you a call and ask you at some point. It's just going to happen. Yeah. Rip yeah. Rollins is always around. So. <laughs> yeah. She's got an 800 number. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. I, I do understand his position, too, because, you know, you get an offer and it's good. You go with it, right? Yeah, you can't refuse it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, not are you, 22 just, years since uh, Amended Rhyme came out. Mm-hmm. Have you been lucky enough to not need a day job since then? Or? Just oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Uh, you know, go, go all throughout those years. We, we all had day jobs. Different. It was always tricky to get to tour because, you know, you had to get time off. And all that stuff. So we, we've been juggling with that stuff, you know, juggling that stuff for a long time. Everybody does. And uh, as far as I know, there was just really that last year with the Tad Morose that I, I didn't really have to work, but that was it. So, and and that that was also I let me point out there was no no way that we you know probably I was probably the poorest member of the band because I didn't do <laughs> didn't work. Everybody else sort of kept a day job going because you know they had some deal going some some way or another. And I, for, for some reason, I'm just the kind of guy. I'm like, I, you know what? I'll be kind of poor. I'll just do this instead and focus on it. I can put all the time and effort into it. But then, then you're not very rich. But you know, it's an interesting life. <laughs> cool. So yeah, I'm sure you had to sleep on a lot of couches then. Oh, I've done that. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the band Trail of Murder. I'd never heard it. <clears throat> I never heard about this band until a couple of days ago. Oh, it's um, a shame. Missed out. It's a, it's a good album that we put out. I'm definitely gonna look it up. Obviously, yeah. I, I collect stuff, so I'm disappointed. I know. Come on, <laughs> should have. It should've. should be in there. It should be in there. But I'll well, get well, it. if you haven't even checked it out yet, you'll be surprised. It's good stuff. Because yeah. you know, it's uh, it's me and Daniel. You know, we we wrote most of the stuff for 
for the Ted Morose part, you know, for the Ted Morose albums. So it's the majority of that. So you'll recognize a lot of elements from there. Okay, cool. Oh, nice. 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 Same so guitar that... tone, that sort of thing? What? Same guitar tone? As oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much, you know. Not the same because uh, he was doing all the guitars here, not half of them. <laughs> so, so, uh, but yeah, you, you'll hear that. Uh, it's, it's got that, you know, body to it. Mm. So is that band is that band done, or are you going to put out another album uh, at some point? Or? No, no, they're they're still doing stuff. It's just that I'm not a part of oh, it. Oh really? So, uh, Boy, you leave uh, every band you're in. <laughs> well, that's what people say. But you, <laughs> Do you ever stay? <laughs> you, you look at it like this. I was in Tad Morose for ten years. I was yeah. in Tamaros for 10 years, to, you know, thick and thin. And uh, then when I got fed up, that's the problem, of course, because then you don't really have a home. Right. And uh, so you do one thing and it doesn't work out. You do another thing and that also doesn't work out. But you look at it like this. That's what's going to happen, you know. If, if at one point you leave your family, you're going to bounce around for a while before you find a new home. And it took me a while. Yeah. So... And of course, uh, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually quite happy. Uh, hang on, I'm actually quite happy to to have done this because you know I did try the bloodbound situation for a while. I did the trailer murder, and it's a shame the trailer murder went the way it did. You know, it's basically just you know un unfortunate circumstances that made things go sour. You know, right. Right. and uh, then you had the Project Arcadia and now Sirius Black. And so with Sirius Black, it's, you know, I've, I've found, finally found a home where I, I can work and just keep going and everything is, you know, there's a purpose behind everything we do, which makes it right. a, a bit more sustainable than anything else I've done for a long time. Yeah. Right. What were you saying, Sex? Um, have you ever or will you ever put together a band specifically to your liking? Exclusively? Oh, I, you know, and pretty much, pretty much everyone you talk to, if they're a musician, they've they've got this little thing in their head going like, "Who do I want? I want this guy, and I want this guy," and and then it comes down to this this one little thing: can I finance it? Right. And it's not just that. So first, you can I finance it, and are these people gonna be happy with falling in line? Because mm. you know, most of us, we've got a bit of an ego once you're going. If you ha if you take anybody worth their salt, you know. Then they're, they're gonna, gonna want they're gonna yeah. want to have a big input, you know, and so maybe right. it won't work anyway. So right. who knows? At some point, I'm I'm, I'm always thinking, you know, I want to put out one album doing one specific thing because it's got nothing to do with what people would expect me to do, or maybe they actually do, but they haven't heard me do it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and then I'm always thinking, you know what? I do that, and it's just for my own gratification. Is it gonna be worth it though? Because you know, mm -hmm. I, I've I've heard this music in my head already, and so I I know it's I know it can be done. But if mm -hmm. nobody cares about it, why should I actually finish it? You know, I put it out there. It's a good question. Well, because you care about it, and you well, get yeah. your put I on do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of stuff I care about already. That's the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and just you know, just because it falls outside of the parameters of what I'm doing at the moment, and I can't really incorporate it. Should I do it just because I need to hear it? No, I don't. Not, that, not necessarily, because that would also mean that I'm not doing what I can be doing that actually that I know there will be an outlet for. Mm. And so it's that it's that time, money, you know, effort spent. You know, is it worth it? Life short, so we should all do everything we want to do, all right. But then you you do everything you you think of, and then suddenly nothing gets done well. Mm. Yeah, so, right, right. You guys, it's got to be done right, which means time and effort again. You gotta put in the hours. What what direction would that album be? Oh, <laughs> that is the biggest problem because if if I'm just going like uh, genre stylistically, I would completely and totally want to do a progressive rock album, not metal. Oh, progressive, really? yeah, progressive rock. Oh. And but the the problem here is all the musicians that I'm going like, how would I work with this guy? They're all different people. They wouldn't really do that. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Interesting. Uh, urban, yeah. urban, who are um from your entire musical career and everyone that you've worked with, do you have any favorite musicians that you've worked with? Or maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe was anybody more of a pain in the butt than anybody easy to work with or any favorites that you have? Pretty much everyone will have like good sides and bad sides. 
Right. So, like I said, you know, for 10 years, I butted heads with Krunt, with Christer from Tad Burroughs. And uh, that said, he's awesome in other respects, you know. So, <laughs> so he's, fan he's a fantastic person, you know. It's a, there is, you will never find a more fair person, a more honest. Wow. He will not rip anybody off ever. If he says something, that's what he stands for. And that's part of the problem here with, you know, why I left, because he had talked to the guy at the studio. And so he'd basically given him his word that we're going to show up. And so he just couldn't back down on that. And, you know, that's something that it's commendable. It didn't really work out for me at the time. But uh, still, I can't blame the guy for, for having that, taking that stance. Right. And uh, then you take something else, you know, like Daniel Olson that I work with on Trailer Murder as well. You know, he's probably what I would call the most natural musician in the world. Oh. He doesn't have to think about anything. He's just basically just he it's just natural. He picks up the guitar and it just like comes out the way, you know. He, oh, very you cool. can drop him into any song anywhere and he'll find out how to play it. That's And he just yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. It's good to find musicians like that. Yeah. So, so how did you go about Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just gonna say that basically a follow up to that. And and then you take other people like Rami Ali, for instance, now that we just, you know, we called him up because we needed somebody to step in very quickly on the first tour of the series Black and such a beautiful human being, so wonderful, also a great drummer. But like I said, that beautiful human being, you know, just everything settles down when he walks into the room everybody that's just harmony flowing out from the guy you know? wow. Wow. So, so, so that's another thing you should look at you know there are so many different yeah. things to consider wow Those are such great such great traits wow yeah but how did you go about meeting bob Cazzonis? He he was on the last two out this one and the previous one uh uh the last two yeah. i believe right yeah well, how, how did you was it somebody that you wanted to work with initially, or how did you guys? Uh... That that is funny because here's the thing: uh, I saw Firewind perform at Prog Power in Atlanta, and I looked at the stage, and uh, there was one guy that stood out, and I said, "I don't remember who stood next to me. It might have been Andrew Atwood of the Scourge, mm -hmm. uh, probably not at that time though, but it could have been. I don't really remember who it was, but I, I turned to the side and I said, "That's the guy I want to work with." Wow. And so, you know, I didn't really think it would happen, but I said, that's the guy I want to work with. A number of years later, we're heading out on the first Series Black tour again, you know, and uh, Roland just couldn't make it, you know, the, the, he didn't really understand that we were going to go on this extensive a tour at that point in time, and he couldn't. So he said, I'm sitting this one out, and it turned out that it would be a permanent thing. But he, he was going to sit it out, so I said, hey, I'm going to give Bob a call. And so I gave Bob a call, and uh, he said, sure, I can do it. And he showed up. Wow. Uh, now, how did I have Bob's phone number at this point in time, though? That's easy, because I was uh, I just released an album with uh, a Bulgarian band called Project Arcadia right before this. And uh, we were shooting some videos, and Bob also does that. So he shot and directed those videos in Bulgaria, and that's where we met. So that's the first time we actually met. So I met Bob when, he, when we were doing this, and so by the time... We needed someone for Sirius Black, and this was on really short notice. I think it was like one week ahead of time, you know, maybe something like that. And I gave Bob a call, and he just shows up. We go in and rehearse, and we roll out on the road. Wow. That's how that went about. Very it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, that's really cool. Wow. Well, you, you answered my uh, Roland Grappel uh, question already. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, here's the thing, though. I can tell you right now. Yeah, I totally understand Roland. Uh, I think Mario had misrepresented the truth. He's Mario is an expert at doing this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he, he's he's he really wants to get the deal done. You know, he wants to he wants to sail to work, and so he'll just like yeah, he'll, he'll tell you what he thinks you want to hear. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be touring, but not that much. Yeah. And then when the tour comes around, it's like, oh, but this is a lot. You're like, yeah, you said no, I, I know, but we had. To. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, it's always justified with Mario. But the thing is, if you know that you know you listen to half of what he says, and you go like, half of it might be true. Am I fine with half of this being true? All right, I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> if you're not fine with that, say no. <laughs> That's funny. And um, Thelman left too, right? So after yeah. the uh, first album, I, I think he did like what a, a first a couple shows or something. I actually, actually 
I I had to give him the call where I, I, I hate doing this. I, I actually had to call him and say that, dude, you're fired. Really? And uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the reason is uh, for the first tour, Tolman has back problems. So right. he couldn't show up. And it was not just that, you know, back problems, messy home situation, everything, just too much stress. So this is why Rami came in. And this was with three days, three days notice before the tour kicked in. Rami yes, kicked something. I remember seeing all that stuff, yeah. He helps us out, and we had a great time on tour. And uh, after that was done, though, you know, we, we had festival gigs and stuff like that. And, yeah, Toma would call and cancel, like, the day before. Oh, wow. So, oh. This doesn't work. I mean, That's... I understand. Yeah, Toma is awesome. He's a fantastic guy. I absolutely loved working with him on, on in the making of the album mm-hmm. and also just hanging out with him. He's, he's a great, great, great dude. But mm-hmm. that was the one side that, it didn't really work for us, yeah. uh, you know, and the, 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 the place where he was in his life at the moment, it wasn't compatible with us touring. Mm. Okay. So, you know, we just had to move on. Yeah. And it's a shame because great, like I said, a great, great person. Fantastic. We had a lot of, a lot of fun. I re- really do get along with him. So yeah. yeah, he was a huge influence on me from back, my, back in the flying guardian him. days. He's quite a distinctive drummer. You'll know if he's been involved. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, Definitely, definitely not. He's also a good songwriter. He has good, good ideas. Oh, really? Yeah. I have no idea. I don't even remember him writing anything for Blind Guardian, unless I just don't realize that. But oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you no, know, it's not necessarily that everybody gets you know public credit all the time. Right. Either. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But you know, he basically wrote uh, 70 percent of my Mystic Mind, and oh, roughly wow. the same. And he, it was uh, his basic idea for the title track on the first album. Oh. So uh, I just had to write the lyrics and maybe do some structural change to it. And uh, just did minor changes to the melodies. They, they were good melodies, too. So, you know, he's a good songwriter. Yeah, well, that's cool, no? Usually drummers just yeah. go and play drums and that's it, you know? Drummers well, not don't necessarily. Do I mean, they don't do much. Shit. To, we can go back to the Tad Moreau's days. Uh, before I joined the band, the, the principal songwriter had been the previous drummer. I was just Don kidding. I'm a, I'm a drummer, too. Yeah, well, you know, so you know that you don't do anything <laughs> at all. But, yeah. you know, seriously, there are plenty of drummers out there that you know have, have got a, a good sense. Because as a drummer, you have to have a really strong sense of structure. Yeah. And that I think that helps. Right. And I, I always say that if you start out as a drummer and pick up another instrument later on, you're better off than starting out picking up another instrument and moving to the drums. Starting with the drums is probably the best option. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess, start off... Uh, you understand the importance of timing in a different way. Yeah, exactly. I started off a guitar, and then I, I gave it up, and then I heard... I was at a, a guitar practice. I heard this guy come into the room playing drums, and I'm like, oh, my God, I want to play that. So, ever <laughs> since then, I was like 10 years old. Ever since then, I've, I've been playing drums. Yeah, I bet your parents were thrilled. <laughs> oh, they didn't say, my parents didn't care. They didn't, they, they bought me the drum kit, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, well, I think, you know, my parents yeah. didn't have the best of time either because, you know, practicing metal vocals isn't exactly quiet, so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, they, 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 they were, they were absolute champs about it. They put up with it. So, yeah. yeah I, and I was, I was really loud back in the day, too. I could compete with <laughs> So. Nice. Yeah, I don't think my neighbors were too thrilled though. I used to, I used to play with the windows open. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So to, just to let them know I'm I'm here, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, Project Arcadia. You mentioned that before. How did you get involved with that? Because they had an album out before you joined. So what happened? Yeah. Um. Well, they you know they needed a singer, and uh, I guess they had some some issues with Alex. For some reason, I don't really remember the details, but he, he couldn't do the next one or they didn't want him to do the next one, whichever way it was. Mm-hmm. Still a cool dude, though. Um, so they they contacted me and they actually contacted me, I think, while I was doing Tabula Rasa the first time. So I was tracking that and I said, no, guys, I, I, I can't. But I, I don't remember that this myself. Uh, mm-hmm. the plowman told me this, <laughs> that, hey, this is the second time we reached out. To you. <laughs> like, oh, really? So so anyway, so they did that. And uh so they contacted me, and uh, we just, yeah, it was fun doing. So did the album, and, uh, and he asked me if I wanted to join, and I joined, and then Sirius Black happened, and so there was no time, and so we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I know that uh, I talked to Plumman actually today, and he's uh, he was lamenting the fact that he wanted to do some songwriting with me, and I said, we can, but just not right now because I'm busy. 
Right. So, but he's working on a new album, and they're going to have a different singer on it, as far as I know. But I'm, I will also sing on a few tracks. Oh, okay. Just to make sure that people understand that we're absolutely super good buddies. (laughs) (laughs) No, seriously, these these. These guys are awesome. They're absolutely they fantastic. Are. I, I like yeah. the album. That album's a really and, good album. And I don't just mean like musically. And I'm mean, as instrumentalists and you know composers. I just mean that they're fantastically warm human beings. Oh, yeah. So you know, anytime I, I've gone down there, it's like I feel right at home. It's, mm. it's a good feeling. Oh, that's that's nice. good. Yeah. Very good. Well, it sounds like you're pretty good friends with uh, every band you've been in, I guess, right? Oh, uh, well, it depends. I think you know <laughs> most of them anyway. Well, yeah, you know, you give it time too. You know, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure that you know, if I walk back into the rehearsal room with Tad, you know, Tad Moreau's, you know, five months months after I quit, there'd be like some <laughs> harsh <laughs> words. You know, not so much from my side because you know, I they were the ones that ended up in a in a difficult position and not me so much. So, right, yeah, yeah. No, no, no problem. You know, pe- most people are reasonable in the end. So you. Oh, you, you let it go, and even if you have differences of opinion, and you think that maybe you were you were wronged or whatever, you just let it go. Just let right. it go, and just go like, it's fine. You're doing yeah. well, doing well. Everything is fine. You know, we're moving on. That's a good outlook. That's a good outlook. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought Saxon had something to say. I do. I got uh, question go and comment. Go ahead. <clears throat> Which one you want? Whatever one you want. Number three. Number three. I don't have a number three. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you the comment first. Uh, the vibe I'm getting off you is you're, uh, you've got an intelligent mind and a, and a kind heart. So I, I wish you prosperity and peace, love, and happiness. And my question is, uh, any, any, uh, anything coming up for you stateside anytime soon? Um. Not as far as I know. I mean, we there have been some talks about, you know, maybe we can join this tour and maybe we can join this tour. But in the end, it's a little too expensive for us, generally speaking. That's, that's uh, what I uh, hear from Europeans all the time. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, it's not that we can't afford to go on the tour, but it's just that we're kind of, a, you know, what's the payoff going to be? Right. Uh, it, it's, it's such a big country, you know, and, and the, on, the only reason why it kind of works for us is because I'm here. So you have one member already on this side. <laughs> so, right. so, so there's that but you know that's such a small thing in the whole equation anyway you gotta fly everybody over and then then we're also used to a certain standard of touring in in europe you know where we you know everything is we're being taken care of you know and there's, there are pot meals served and we have showers and we have all this arranged and, and everything's two care. hours away yeah and then you come over here and nobody cares about you just you know you're like you're the scum of the earth that's what the, the venue will think of you it's like what <laughs> this is not yeah. what we're used to so so there's that little you know thing to get over to you know any band that's you know from here that's touring europe will tell you it's like europe that's where we want to tour right. um this is not to say that you can't have a hard and really difficult tour in Europe either, because that's also possible. And it, it, you know, it comes down to whether or not you have a good tour manager and good planning and preparation, and you have have good contacts with all the promoters. If you have good good contact with them, and you you know they expect you to come back, well, of course they're going to treat you well. Right. So, yeah, but no, friends, sadly, uh, no plans. My friends in Bewitcher just went over to uh, over to Europe for a summer thing, and they were psyched out of their minds. I think it's their first yeah. time in Europe, so they're uh, yeah. they're in for a treat. I know that. Well, you know, and, and on, on top of that, you know, you go to Europe when you're on tour, you know, you, you stop, you drive to the next place, you step off the tour bus, and you, you can walk around the town, you know. Right. It, you know, everything, you, you can walk everywhere. Whereas you tour the U.S., you have to have a car if you want to see anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in Europe, you can go see all the sites on foot, pretty much. So, you know, wherever you go, you can check out a new city and so when you tour Europe for the first time, you know, it's a blast. It's, it's awesome because you can see so many things. Uh, sure, it wouldn't have to be, you know, 15th time. You can still have a blast, but, you know, <laughs> you've already seen some of the sites. So you're going to go, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to hang around the bus today. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got to say? Oh, I thought you had more stuff. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Extensive answers, you know, kind of yeah. stop you from asking more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything, Pete? Yeah, so, like Urban. Um, as far as jobs, aside from, of course, you're doing your music, 
how often do you do um, paid jobs for laying down vocals for, for first of all, do you accept the uh, offers or requests from local bands or just that are not yet, for example, signed or not on any uh, labels and whatnot? Do you take up those types of jobs? Like if you were to be requested to sing on an album and obviously they paid you for your time. I don't get too many offers, uh, but when I do, it's typically it typically happens when I have an album in the works. That's when people come out of the woodwork and they're like, can you sing on this? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? And uh, so even if I wanted to, I could. Mm. And then once you start turning jobs down, they're not going to come back. So <laughs> the problem is solved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there are there are a few things, a few, few times where I've, I'm where I said, like, yeah, I want to do this. And uh, then just things happen in life and things get complicated and it just falls through. And those those are the times where I'm like, oh, sorry, people. I shouldn't have said yes to begin with. But, you know, right. sometimes you just want to do things. And, uh, yeah, it, it's probably better to say no than to say right. yes. Right. Of course. Uh, yeah, so but like, it happens. Yeah. God, I just had this question on my mind, and now I forgot. I do this every time. Anyway, I'm just going to skip that question. Uh, You're just uh, pretending like you have questions lined up. No, I, I, I did, and then you, I did, and then you kept going on and on and on, and then I just it's totally my fault. It. It's my it's fault. It's your Thank fault. You. It's always, always blaming someone else. <laughs> it, it is true. It's my show. I can blame whoever the hell I want. You might as well be the singer, right? What's I that? have a solution for you. Might as well be the singer you blame everything on. Yeah, well, that's what happens. We get the blame. Uh, now we blame the bass player, right? Exactly. <laughs> What, what's your That's what's your good, solution? Man. My solution is once you think of a question, write it down. <laughs> See, can There's I tell you some of my favorite there. songs? Can and I tell you that, some of my favorite songs over this album? On, on that note, good night, everybody. <laughs> hey, hey, I gotta get my favorite songs out of the way. All right, yeah. go ahead, go. I like, I love the album. All right, the album's awesome, and I got them right here. All right. Nobody can read the that. songs that I absolutely absolutely love. Burn witches, burn. Long Gunman Rule, I Can Do Magic, Mr. Night Mist. Man, I liked everything. Witch of Caldwell Town, I went crazy for. Just Kill Me was great. Newfound Freedom, just awesome songs, man. I like the whole album. These songs really, really did it for me. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm really happy that we share the opinion that this is a good album. Because, you know, when we, we had done this, I said, this is the best album I've ever done. If I've ever done. And I knew people would, they were all going to say, no, 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 you did this. And this, this album's better. And I'm going like, not from the way I see it, you know, this is the best thing I've ever done. It doesn't mean that it's that it necessarily has a top song on it. It doesn't mean that it necessarily has my top performance. I just think that overall, the whole overall quality was the best thing I've ever done. And also, I, I love the sound of the album. We, we yes. just went, you know, we, we went to great lengths to make sure that we had a bit more of an old school type of situation in the production than, than we normally would. So, and I think it shows, you know, I, I love this, this, the sound. It's like, uh, uh, I would say it's a more grounded and more real album than the previous two that we've done, you know, with, you know, the way the drums sound. And of course, this is different philosophy. I love this. Bob hated it, which is basically why he's not with us anymore. Wow. So, really? Yeah. yeah wow. It's a production value. Bob also runs his own studio in, in Greece, right. you know, and he, he felt like, he felt that was old, man. Those, those drums are old. And I'm like, that was the whole point. There's warmth to it. It's like, you know. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to say that. I was going to say two words, organic and warm. That's what yeah. I wanted to say. And that's that, what the sound I got out of it. Well, I, yeah. I thought it was fantastic. I texted Wayne when I heard it. I told right Wayne. I said, look, this yeah. album fucking kicks ass. Seriously, man. This album is fucking yeah. awesome. Well, that's, uh, that's part of why I like it so much. Because, you know, it's a... Uh, I, I, I'm going to say it's the best sounding album I've ever been on, at least. Yeah. So, so there is that. And, you know, Bob put in a lot of hard work. And when he was unhappy about that little bit, you know, because Bob was the one doing all the pre-production. So he was in, in charge of gathering everything together and making sure that it all worked. So with, after all that time and then we make a decision to take a turn with the production, sound, you know, yeah. that he didn't like. I understand. Oh, it, it wasn't just that either. I think, you know, I could have been more communicative during the process. So I think he, he had a beef with me and he's uh, not yeah. wrong. No, no, seriously, he's not wrong. You know, I, I have a bit part, part in this, to, you know, 
well, whatever. It, it happened the way it happened, and the things are the way they are. And mm. It's cool. Right. All right. Yeah. Well, Let's go. I think it kicks ass, man. It sounds great. The whole thing is awesome. Yeah. So you're gonna pick your favorite song and then name like six of them. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, and, and if I were to, ch and if, I don't. It's very. It was very hard to. to I legitimately really love these songs. I'm, yeah, really I'm looking at them right now. Like if I had to pick through this list, it's hard. I really couldn't tell you which my favorite song on this list is. I mean, they all these catchy. The chorus is it's just everything. Everything kicks ass, man. I, just, I love it. Well, the trick is though for something like this, you can't pick one song and be done with it, and that's that's how I was gonna say. So, but but here's the trick. So, if you pick a song to play right now, which one would it be? Me, I think I would pick, and this after listening to it, I listened to the album once. Yeah. Uh, I think I would pick Witch of Caldwell Town. I think. Oh, cool. Uh, See, so so right now that's your favorite. Give it five more minutes, and it'll change. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I can do magic. Really? I just, that chorus was like driving. Yeah, that chorus is awesome. That, man. That my, chorus. my favorite is Binary Magic. That's my favorite one. I like that yeah. one. Yeah. I, I will say this. Dude. Binary Magic has one of my favorite vocal moments on the album. That's, that's why I like it so much. Yeah. So, yep. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. Matt, yeah. I remember the question I was going to ask now. And it's oh. first on the list, binary magic. <laughs> See, at least he wrote something down, right? I wrote stuff down too. I wrote things well, it's not I wrote it down. Anyway, uh you guys are all over the place. So how do you record? Do you get into one room at some point or you just send files back and forth or Well, obviously do? I'm in this room. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well when so, when you get to the final stage, I mean Well the final stage, this is where I do the final vocals. So you do um, everything this is, home. This is this is where it's done. Uh the last album, so Now You'll Never Know, uh, was uh, tracked in Munich, though, because that was just a song we had extra that, you know, that we were going to take it off the album. So I hadn't finished it. I just had raw demo vocals. And uh, so AFM got to hear the song, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, for fortunately, and they said, this has got to, because we were planning on doing tracking that a little bit later. Because we could just give that as a bonus to Japan, because we have to have a bonus to Japan, and that was the plan. Damn, and Japan. AFM said, no, 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 that's not a bonus track. you got to put this on the album. So uh, last day of mixing, I grabbed my laptop and a microphone, and I <laughs> set up in a room on my own. And uh, I tracked that thing and come back in and drop drop a USB stick into the, in the studio. Here you go. And so we loaded up and... Uh, it makes that song too, so that was cool. Wow. What do you think about what the the uh, Japan uh, want bonus tracks? You cool with that? Yeah, I mean, what, what I, I understand the situation. You know what what the situation <clears throat> is, right? The, the yeah. reason that you have the reason you have to have a bonus track for Japan is because otherwise people will simply just buy the the import version mm, because yeah, true. domestic oh. releases are more expensive in Japan than imports. So you see the you see their problem. If you want anybody to actually have local distribution you know, of in Japan, you have to give them a bonus track, or they're not going to release it. Hmm. Not to mention I, Japanese it's, metal it's fans a are the best. It's as simple as that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Jap oh. What'd you say? Japanese metal yeah. fans are the best. Yeah, Japanese metal fans are the best in the world. They might very well be, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but quite frankly, there are good people all over the globe. Yeah. Good ones, bad ones. Is there a favorite, place. favorite place that you've played? Um, good question. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, I think I can give you a different spin on the story, though, because there was this one time, and this is not my experience. I was shocked this time. We were playing France. We were playing Paris. And the crowd went so nuts that I just stopped. I forgot to sing the second verse. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so, so that was like a favorite moment of mine. I was like, what is this? This is not France. This is not what they typically do for this kind of music. And uh, it was awesome. And uh, I really, seriously, I forgot to start the, the second wow. verse. I was just looking at them like they were so beautiful, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it, has that ever happened, you know, before or after that? Forgetting no, the not, lyrics? not like that. No, not yeah. like that. I, I, I keep 
I I I've forgotten lyrics all the time. But I I completely forgot singing the whole verse. I'm just standing there looking. You know? yeah, <laughs> what, what do you what do you do when you forget lyrics? You just mumble something. I make up new words. Just make, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some sometimes you mumble. Sometimes you make up new words. It, it all depends, you know. <laughs> or or how late you realize that you messed up the words, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You could be like uh, Vince Neil and just stick your microphone into the audience. Yeah, I used to, to be. Abs- I used to be absolutely terrible with the, the lyrics, but uh, I will say and you know give myself a pat on the back. I've gotten way way better since I joined Serious Black. <laughs> wow. yeah, well, I, I've also changed my uh, stance and opinion about rehearsals quite a bit too. I used to say that oh, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Now I'm like it's really necessary, man. If you put in the time, the result is going to show. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, Urban, do, oh, sorry, Wayne, sorry. Every do time I still, put this do album, you, still, you, you ask something else. I know, I have some other questions. <laughs> as far as nervousness and butterflies, do you still get them or or is it dependent on the venue? Do you still no. get nervous or do you just, is it just, just your thing? It's just another day at work for you? Um, I don't think I've been nervous since... Since he came on the show. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I remember the first <laughs> show I ever did. I was so nervous. I didn't know what to do. And somebody actually took some video of it. It's terrible. Wow. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know if that tape is VHS. You know, I don't know if that tape actually exists still. But if it does, there is a, a horrible moment for me at some point where I'll see it again. Because <laughs> it's, it's painfully obvious that I do not know what to do. <laughs> now, really? Well, what yeah. happened? What, what? Come on, I was 14, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened? What? Uh, it's basically just I'm just pacing left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah, well, that, that's fun. At that time, I was really, 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 really nervous. I think uh, at some point, the realization dawned on me that it doesn't really matter if things are perfect for as long as people are having a good time. Right. Mm-hmm. And once that dawned on me, I was like, I'm not nervous anymore. Is if anything really bad happens, it's not really bad. That's that's just the thing. It's not really bad. It's actually a cool moment for everyone to share. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mess up, something happens. I mean, I, I can fall straight in between the kick drums, you know, and I've actually done that. Yeah. Oh, that's not a, <laughs> that's not a big deal. That's not a good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we were playing. Uh, we were playing Chicago. Uh, it wasn't actually Chicago. It was Lansing, and. Uh, the, the stage, you know, the ceiling was kind of low, and the drum riser was uh, maybe like three inches. <laughs> and and I took one step backwards, and I hit that little thing, and I fell, and I landed smack dab in the middle, right between two kick drums. And uh, so I'm lying down singing, and I'm getting up, giving a smile and a thumbs up, and we just roll on. <laughs> <laughs> like it never happened. Yeah, but it was fun. I still remember that moment, and this is why I'm, I'm not nervous. For any oh. show, is yeah. it basically any mishap that will happen will turn into a really fond memory later on, unless right. you of course lose a limb or something. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that hasn't happened so far. Yeah, no. not, yeah you not never have an eighteen-inch uh, Stonehenge come down and uh, be threatened by little people getting stomped on it. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's never been an issue. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. What's the next topic for the next album? You never know. Oh, that's different. <laughs> there will be no falling down uh, any large scale model of Stonehenge, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> but yeah. But uh, with the, the you know, Magic album, um, whose idea was it to, to write stuff about Magic? Because not too many metal bands talk about Magic stuff, well, besides oh. Dio. And, uh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is and different. I don't, gener- I don't generally do that either. But it all really started. It all started with uh, the, the joke, really. You know, we're like, yeah, magic, serious black magic, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was a joke, basically. You know, like, yeah, really? that's what we should do. We should do some serious black magic. And uh, so, so one day I wake up on the tour bus. Uh, I think it was in Stuttgart, but but it might have been somewhere else. And I get up and I'm like. I have this chorus. We're making serious black. I have the chorus in my head. I'm like, mm. this is this is a song. This is a song. I mean, I know it was a joke, but it's gonna it's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna be great. And so I go in and I talk to the guys, and they're setting up, and uh, nobody cares. No, <laughs> 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 I go like, wow, 
And I guess maybe, you know, now nah, I decided it wasn't my idea that was wrong. It was just my timing. So right. I save it. And it's a little bit later on the same tour, we're playing uh, the backstage in Munich. So I'm going like, I'm not going to mention it before the show. I'm going to mention it after the show this time. So we're done with the show. So we're backstage, backstage in Munich. And uh, I'm going like, hey, got this chorus. Bob looks over at me, picks up the guitar, and this is the riff. And we wrote the song right there. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah. So, so, cool. so that, was, that was just perfect. I mean, I didn't, we didn't sit down and write map the whole thing out, really. But we had the, the big, big building blocks, and Bob took it back home and put it all together, sent it back, and said, is this what you had in mind? And I said, this is perfect, Bob. And we just rolled with it. Yeah, real cool. Really Have you cool. learned any magic tricks since? Oh, no, no, I should, uh, but I... <laughs> but I, I see you, you wear I, the whole getup and everything on stage, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. really warm, let me tell you. But yeah. it's fun to do. Like it. And, yeah, it's and cool. unfortunately, I'm not a magician like that. <laughs> I should perhaps practice a few things, but no, it's not really... It's uh, There's not much room for anything like that in our show. We, we could do some big stuff, but yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> did, you hear, uh, did you hear David Copperfield has AIDS? What? No. Yeah, apparently he was doing magic. Oh, oh damn! <laughs> but don't, I need that sound effect machine. You have the you have the drum kit behind you, man. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting back here to do that. <laughs> On that note, yeah, exactly. Um, crap! Now you just sidetracked me again. Damn it! Sidetracking is the oh, worst jokes. Name the game. There are worse jokes. You do t- do some terrible jokes sometimes. <laughs> I am who I am. <laughs> What? Go ahead, Pete. What? I, I kind of like that one though. That, that was a good one. <laughs> that magic joke. He doesn't have AIDS anymore. Apparently, it's gone. No, it's, right, then it's an old joke. Apparently, it's yeah. hibernating. It's not gone. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, it's a good um, thing. There's a treatment for it now that kind of works. You know, not that you know, they have, they have good drugs now. Thank yeah, goodness. Sure, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. We don't want people suffering unnecessarily. You know. Right. It's the only magic joke I know, so. Oh, I don't know any either. Thank except God. the serious black magic. I thought it was funny. You know, we should call the album Magic because then we have serious black magic and that's how it started. Uh, how the, you know, that's how it all started rolling. And uh, then I just decided, okay, why don't we just make a full-blown concept out of it? And I started writing the story. And uh, and, and this room was very interesting. The whole back wall here was uh, filled up with notes. It looked like a conspiracy theory kind of thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, are you into conspiracy theories? I think they're fun. Yeah, they're definitely I think fun. So too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you have a favorite one? Ah, uh, not really. I mean, uh-huh. and uh, there are a few, you know, that there are plausible. And here's the, the the cool thing about conspiracy theories: it's, it's, it, some of them are true, some of them are really conspiracies, but yeah, yeah. the majority of them are not. So how do you how how can you tell which is what? Right. <laughs> and that exactly. makes it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I've got the latest conspiracy theory. Yeah. Um, Pluto from Walt Disney. Yeah. I guess I guess he's got AIDS too. Well, I, I know he was at least fucking goofy. <laughs> <laughs> oh that, my terrible. god, that is terrible. <laughs> All right. And that's the shit we put up with on this show. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So after uh, this album, do you, what do you got in store for the next album? I know you can't tell us too much because, uh, as we told me the other day, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, what can you tell us? Um, I can tell you that the, the song I got up to fix at five in the morning is going to be a really good one. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, it's it's not a concept album, this one, uh, because I really didn't want to do you know, concept albums back to back is then all of a sudden it's, there's going to be the expectation that the next right. one's going to be a concept mm-hmm. album and the next one's going to be one. And then you've kind of painted yourself into a corner where people, if you don't make a concept album, it's just like not even worth it. Yeah, and and yeah. I'm going to go, the, you know, the fact that something is a concept album doesn't make it any better or any worse than something that's not. So right. let's not do two, two back to back. But the, we do have a little bit of a central theme, mm-hmm. but there's no overarching story. There's yeah, I'm not sure that this is going to show up on the album, but there's uh, there, there are three songs that, are, that tie in together, and if they end up on the album, that's kind of cool. If they don't, then they don't. They don't, they don't you know. Right. So th- there'll be a little bit of uh, of that 
perhaps in the mix, but uh, yeah. The, the central right. theme is important, but it's not like everything. Because basically, if we have a song that doesn't fit and it's a better song, it gets fanned up on the album. You know? Right. So, okay. That's the, the working. Th- these are the rules we work under right now. <laughs> okay. You can always go on the Urban Breed project, right? Um, let's call everything I do the Urban Breed project. <laughs> 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 well, well, you know. That's the thing. Uh, it's easy to overestimate your own importance, especially as a singer, uh, because you are, you know, quite visible at all times in everything. And if, if there's ever a review, the singer is not going to get overlooked, whereas in the bass player might not be mentioned at all. Yeah. And so you, it's re- really easy for us to overestimate our importance. Sure, we are important, you know, for the voice of the band, mm-hmm. and it's kind of it's easier to have a distinctive voice with a voice than having it with a guitar but if you have a guitar player with a distinctive voice that's quite an uh, achievement i would say but like i said you always get mentioned all the time good or bad you get mentioned so being a singer it's easy to get a big head and uh, trying to work against that is you know otherwise this thing will explode and this room will be gone and uh, (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> no, no, it's not the Urban Breed pro- project. Uh-huh. I do, I do understand that I have a significant part to play, right. but uh, it's not just about me, anyway. Right. No, no, I was talking about the extra songs that don't make it on the album. I don't know uh, if they don't make it on the album. It's not because they're bad necessarily, uh, but you know they'll end up on the back burner. They might right. end up on the next Serious Black, and uh, right now there is no such thing in my head as a, a solo album going on. I mean, I always consider it going like when when there's a song I have that I really feel like I want to do this and nobody else cares. I'm going, like, yeah, solo album. But then you get busy with the next song, and then they pick this one up. Okay, so then, then things are fine, and then it's probably better to keep working on that than working on your solo stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, there's there's just the fact that I know that there's going to be a next Serious Black album. There's no guarantee that there's going to be an Urban Breed album ever. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Maybe one day. Who well, knows? That's cool, though. And, least... and is it going to be any better than anything else I've done? No, nah, probably not. It's going to be different. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I I welcome it. If it ever happens, I welcome it. So yeah. everything oh, that you do is, is really course. good. So I'll sell one or two copies then. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you got two buyers here, three buyers maybe potentially. Nah, you, don't, I don't know. <laughs> you don't like anything we like, so that's all right. No, go to I'll, 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 I'll put a magic Let's joke start. on there. It's okay. <laughs> all right. Anything else, guys? Uh, man, don't keep on doing what you're doing, man. All you right. need to hear more kick-ass stuff. Don't stop. Keep doing it. <laughs> don't stop. Uh, keep believing. So you're All right, great uh, you're welcome back anytime, and we're gonna pimp the hell out of the last serious black album. So yeah, you should do see that. Us all over the net. So. All right. Been good I'm being gonna, here. I'm gonna send you an invite to our uh, Facebook group, so please join it. By the way. All right. All right. And um, one other question I didn't I, I didn't even think to ask, and I try to ask everybody this because you know our show is about uh, showing people new bands that nobody might not even heard of. Is is there anything new out there that you're into right now? Oh, anything new. Now, I'm really like, like the one. worst. I'm the worst. I don't look for anything. I'm not picking up any albums. And uh, no, I'm, I'm really bad about it, really. Wow. So, sorry. Every, everybody we ask says the same thing. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Musicians don't listen to music. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, we do. But, you know, spe- but it, it, when you're working on an album, you're not gonna you don't want to get influenced. You're not going to go out and look for other stuff because you're busy working on music. When you're touring, you're doing music all day. So when are you going to listen, really? And uh, when you do listen, you're probably going to go back to listen, you know, listening to your old favorites anyway. Yeah. And uh, then once in a while, you run into something new. And in order for us to answer, to give you that as an answer, you're going to have to ask us that one week when we picked something new up. Otherwise, we don't remember. Right. <laughs> because we're right back into thinking about what am I doing right now? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that that makes sense though. That makes a lot of sense, of course. Yeah. I know that some people make a conscious decision not to pick up any new music because they don't want to be accused of plagiarizing. Hmm. I don't. If I hear new new music, you know, that's fine. And you know, anything that happens, you know, that sounds like something else and it's an accident, 
an accident. There, that's okay. That's acceptable. Right. And all, all I'm saying is something on purpose, like copying, that's unacceptable. Right. Accidents, right. they're going to happen. You know, you're going to have something coming out, come out at some point where you came awfully close to something that you like, that you've heard somewhere else you just forgot about at the, at the moment. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's plenty of that. And in reality, how different can you? I mean, there's all these progressions in this genre of music. It's pretty hard to. I mean, there's not an unlimited number of ways that you can play a progression. <laughs> no, no, that, that it, there is that. But then, then this is when it comes down to expression. That's mm -hmm. re really where it, where it's at. You know, it's mm -hmm. the expression. So you right. you find that, and you find you know the way you emote or not emote, depending on what, what you're looking for. That's, that's right. what, what you can what you can aim for really is you put yourself in there, so you may I mean you may do the same three notes in a row that somebody else did you know in, including yourself because you take three notes right you mm -hmm. can only combine them in so many different ways right. and I say three notes because most of the time a melody will be notes that are like connected you don't right. do the big jumps if you jump from the fifth you know then it's just a jump and it doesn't really stick together as a melody generally speaking you can have jumps in, in there but it's got to be connected so you take those three notes right. that will be connected da 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 you know da 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 you know take those and uh, you can only combine them in so, so many ways so then it's you've got you know you hold one longer do one shorter and mm. it comes down to the expression exactly how right. you sing it or exactly how you play it and uh, what other people play at the same time right right yeah. Oh, but with that said, nobody's gonna do da 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 anytime soon in this band. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I thought I just came up with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me let me tell you the the first time that I decided I was gonna try to write my own song, I'm like, hmm, I don't have any ideas, and this is like way way back, you know, little little guy. Like, what if I just play this backwards? And so I played Smoke on the Water backwards, and it wasn't all that great. <laughs> it wasn't all that, you know, you know. It's not that great uh, forwards either. It wasn't that great an idea either, because it's not like and nobody else ever thought of it either. So, you know, right. <laughs> but you got to right. start somewhere, you know, yeah. do something stupid. Hey, um, they made it work, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm pretty sure that some, some song somewhere is just basically the backwards repetition of another song that was successful. So... Yeah, you're, you're yeah. probably right, man. Yeah. I'm sure there is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, I remember we had this one song, and um, I played it backwards. Just for the hell of it, I played it backwards one time, and I said, it actually sounds cool backwards. Why don't we try making the song another song backwards with these yeah. same chords? Yeah, what it's not that? a bad idea. And it sometimes is. you have some, some, some stupid accidents happen, and uh, in the studio, we like, for instance, Daniel and I, we were working on Life in a Lonely Grave. That's... Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I just tracked this backing vocal package, and uh, I was going to just move it to a different section. And it's just that I offset it by two beats. Hmm. And suddenly, it's just like, whoa, this is way more interesting. Wow. <laughs> so that, so that unfortunately, I messed it up, and so I could never get back. I don't remember exactly how many beats oh, are actually offset. Uh... And I messed it up, so that didn't happen. But anyway... Uh, no, that's still Daniel would you know chide me about that for years afterwards. You should have, you should wow. have, you should have. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man, I'm sorry, man. That works, that still works, but it's not. It didn't have that moment, you know. Right. Oh, accidents yeah. are great. People will tell you music all the time. Happy accidents, you know. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. You you meant to play a phrase one way. You made a mistake. You went, oh wait, that sounds cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. No, it's been and, fun. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. And um, hope you come back on again when the next album comes out and uh, yeah. we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. That sounds yeah. like a great idea. And uh, yeah. don't leave anywhere. I just want I'll close <laughs> the show and then uh, i ask you one thing real quick. Okay. So, all right. Well, good night, everybody. I think we're all done here, right? Yeah, yeah. Johnson. We're good. Urban. Nice, nice talking to you, man. What's, every, Thanks for what's everybody out. wearing? I'm wearing, I'm wearing a serious black shirt. Oh, I'm nice. So, I'm, I'm wearing a black shirt. A black. You're always wearing a black. I what think is that? this is a Marillion shirt. A Marillion? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, shit. Minnesota North Stars. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. The odd man out. Yeah. <laughs> He's <That's> yep. usual. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good way to be. Yeah. All right. Again, thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> Again, thank you very much, and thank you everybody for watching. Oh, and please, I never the show this way, but because I always keep forgetting, but please subscribe to our show on YouTube, on iTunes, everywhere our show is, Stitcher, just everything. Please, Spotify. Uh, Twitch, I think we're on too sometimes, if I feel good enough to uh, do Twitch. But please subscribe to everything. Graffiti on your nearest bridge. Yes, please, but put our logo up on the bridge. <laughs> we need we need you people to support us and share our show and uh, let people know that we're on so they can see our cool guests like Urban Breed. And uh, last week we had uh, Timo uh, Tolki on, right? That's how you say his name. Yeah, it's Timo yeah. Tolki. And uh, yeah, so please share the show. All right, that's it for tonight. See you guys next week. Have a good Adios. night, everybody. Bye. All right. Wait, before we leave, Uncle Saxon has a story for us. Hey, kids, everybody gather around. It's time for Stories with Uncle Saxon. Go. Here it is. So the year was 1990. Um, we were just talking to Urban Breed and... And he uh, reminded me of the first time that I was in Germany, which was in. Oh, that was uh, yeah, that yeah. was urban. Cool. Um, first time I'd been to Germany. Um, I was with my my first wife and her two gorgeous sisters, and we were visiting her brother who lived in Darmstadt and got married to a, a whack job. And uh, so we were hanging out in in Darmstadt and Mannheim. Um, my uh, brother-in-law, Brian, got us tickets to go see ZZ Top, uh, Brian Adams, and Winger at this huge outdoor festival in Mannheim. So on the way there, we Winger. stopped. We got uh, like six of these uh, Stein things with the, the metal and ceramic pop tops. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, those things are like 15% alcohol, and they're like this big. <laughs> we each drank six of those, and we're kind of kind of weaving in and out uh, as we're going into the into the festival grounds and every say 100 feet, my brother thank you man every 100 feet or so um somebody would set up a little stand in the in the main thoroughfares between the cars and the car in the car lot and they uh that's me they, that's you everybody um they would sell shots and this is back before the euro so it would be like one mark a shot, one Deutsch mark for a shot of tequila, and then you walk 100 feet, one Deutsch mark for uh, a shot of rum. Well, there had to be eight or ten of them on the way into the show before you got to the gates to go give them your ticket, right? Mm -hmm. So in 1990, I was uh, 21 years old. Wow, well, long time ago. It didn't matter to Germany. You can start drinking, you know, once you have a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> True. Germany. Uh, that's topical. Anyways, <laughs> um, we get inside, and uh, me and Brian go up to the front, and they have this iron railing around the, I guess it would be called the orchestra pit or whatever, and they would only let a person in to this area in front of the stage if a person left. It was a way that people weren't getting crushed, you know, by... Right. 80,000 people that are there at the time. Right. Mm. So uh, Brian looks at me, and he gives me his beer. Oh, yeah, we got beers, too, once we got in there. He gives me his beer, and he goes, you ready? Ready for what? He looks at the uh, security guards, which are stationed every, you know, 20 feet or so. Jumps over. I give him the beers. I jump over. And the people behind us thought that was a great idea. So they tried jumping over, and the security goes, no, 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 Deutsch, Deutsch, Deutsch. And uh, well, we got it. I am shit-faced by this point. We go to the very front. There's only maybe 300 people in this, in this cordoned-off area. You know, so we had plenty of room to, you know, we weren't getting crushed. So we went right up front, and Brian Adams was singing Heaven. And this Amazon of a German woman must have loved that song. We're in heaven! And she had way more armpit hair than I do. Oh, my God. It was a sweaty day. 
<laughs> I looked at Ryan, I said, I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> it to their, um, they actually had indoor plumbing instead of, you know, just satellites all over the place to, right. to go into. Yeah. So I went in there thinking that I'm going to hurl. I don't want anybody to see me hurl. I'm 21. I'm a stud. I'm a rocker. <laughs> so I go in. The poop is like that much overflowing off the top. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Ew. I walk outside, I go to the bushes, and I just lay down. And all these beautiful, wonderful, gorgeous German people are coming up to be speaking a language. I don't know what the hell they were saying. But it was obvious that, that they were going, oh, poor American, is there something we can do for you? You know, that kind yeah. of thing. They're very kind. I'm like, no, no, no. Somehow I found Brian's car, which had to be parked three quarters of a mile away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I crawled underneath it, and I could hear ZZ Top off in the distance, you know, playing, uh, you know, TV dinners. I'm a <laughs> I couldn't handle it, and I passed on. Um, it had to be 9 o'clock at night. The show was over at, like, 6, you know, and Brian starts up the car, and then he gets an idea, and he looks under the car, and there I am just completely splayed out. Underneath the car, he shuts off the car. Johnny, we gotta go, man. I've been looking for you for three hours. <laughs> so that's my uh, ZZ Top line at a win story. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, armpits and ZZ Top. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Oh my god. Well, and at least this has nothing to do with it, but I also, uh, um, his wife's brothers, they're like seven feet tall each. Mm. And they took me to this Christian concert, some bands I'd never heard of. Apparently, they were called Believer and Deliverance. Oh, and this is 1990. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't worry that they're Christian. They're really good. Mm. So we went and we washed and, you know, these seven-footers were just tearing it up. And um, if you look at Believer's home video, mm. I might be on there because they were recording that in, that's actually what it's called, Believer's home video. That's like the title of the video. Really? And I've never seen it. Mm. Um, Kaleida sent me a copy, but it was all mulched by the time I got here. Yeah. So, if you know anybody, you might see me in, in Darmstadt, Germany in 1990, rocking out to Believer. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, that's probably on YouTube, no? I, uh, hell, this is the first time I thought about it since 1990. I should go look. You should look. We should try getting them on the show. I, I kind of forget about them. Well, that's your neck of the woods there. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I'll try. All right. Is that it for tonight? Yeah. He looks confused, man. Well, he was he's he's reading the uh things. Oh, okay. Urban was texting, so. But uh all right. I think that's it's it for tonight, to right? Back, man. What? It's great to have Pete back. It oh is. yeah, man. Nice to be back. Yeah, that's a problem, yeah. man. Scheduling yeah. is Scheduling has been a nightmare, you know. Uh, that and amongst other things. So, <laughs> in any case, but uh, yeah, no, it was definitely fun, man. Nice seeing you, bro. Well, All right, you. Hopefully, Greg will be back next week. Yeah. Speaking of Greg, was that his fucking doppelganger we just had on as a guest? Anybody else? <laughs> he looked a little Dragon's similar. <laughs> he looked a little similar, to Dragon. Yeah. Talk a little. <laughs> well, we wish. Oh, well. fun Dragon, by the way. Boy, Vod, you got one in. <laughs> and on that note, good night, ladies. Have a good night, guys. Yep. Don't forget, subscribe, share, like, comment. Yada, yep. yada, yada. All right. Bye-bye. See us. Bye.